Hello, welcome to Fencing 101. I'm Cam, and I'm here with my teammates and friends, Talon Gammy and Catherine Mitchell. They're going to be helping me do these videos. Um, and first off, we're going to start with the basics, and here we go. All right, so first off is some terminology. Right, what we fence on here is called a strip. It's got distinctive markings to tell you where things are. I don't know if you can see right here. Okay. Talon's at it right here. There's two sets of lines. There's one right here, and then there's one where Talon's at. And this is called your on guard line. This is where you and your opponent get on guard and face each other before you do your bow. Behind that, come on back this way. Behind that is this line right here, and that shows you. Usually, it's marked off with X's, and it's it's to show you that you're about to run off strip. If you run off strip, it's a point for your opponent, so you don't want to do that. So it gives you. A nice clear indication that you're getting close. All right, so this is our scoring machine. It doesn't actually score, some of the fancier ones do, but this one doesn't score. This, uh, a light goes off on either side here according to which side of the strip you're on and which side makes a touch. So suppose Talon makes a touch, his light goes off on this side. <clears throat> it can be set for different modes, so like coaching mode, so you can, goes off immediately, so you can make multiple touches in a row. And it also gets set for the, the other weapons of fencing as well, which I will get into in just a moment. Are the three weapons of fencing. All right, so take into account both, uh, all three of these are separate sports with each individual rules and equipment and everything. So we have a foil here, we have an epee here, and then we have a saber. Now I'm going to start with foil, here we go. All right, so the foil, easily distinguishable by its small guard that doesn't cover, quite cover your whole hand. Um, it's got a square blade and a small tip. In foil, you have to wear an electrical jacket known as a lame. This electrical jacket is your target area. If you hit off of it, it's known as an off target and you don't get the touch. If you hit on it, you get the touch. And there's also a silly rule known as right of way, but I won't get into that because I fence Epe, and Epe is the best. And that's what I'll be looking over today. So, foil. All right, so next up is the saber. Usually coming into fencing, this is a favorite. Everybody wants to do the hack and slash. In saber, you can either hit with the point, or you can slash anywhere above the waist is target. And with the saber, uh, saber, you also have a lame, but it covers your arm instead of just your chest. Uh, and it goes down to just your waist. And you have an electrical mask, so you can hit the mask as well, as opposed to in foil, where you can only hit chest, no arms, no head. And you can slash. The whole blade is electrified, so that when you make a slash and it hits the lame, light goes off. Or when you make a thrust and hit, light also goes off. So with this guy, there is no point. It's just curved over end, and that is Saber. Now for the absolute best, the love of my life, it is Epe. Distinguished by its nice round bell guard here. It is a lot heavier than the others, and it's got a V-shaped blade. Also, a larger point. Epe is the best, I think, because you can hit anywhere and it's a lot more of a mind game because you can. See, in, in foil and saber, you know, there's only a specific target area, so you only have so much thinking to do around that specific target area. In epe, you can hit anywhere, so there's a lot more strategy like uh, go for their foot, now go up and make them do this so that I do, can do this, and then they can do this, and then I do this, and then I hit. It's, it's, it's really complicated, but that's that's a huge part of what makes this sport so much fun. So that is Epe. All right, so next up is the basic equipment for fencing. Uh, first up is your jacket uniform. On your right arm, there's nothing because you don't want to give places where uh, opponent's blade can catch or whatever. But on your, on your offhand arm, which happens to be my left since I'm right-handed, is your club patches, who you belong to. Solid Arms, Wasco, Huntsville Fencing Club. Um, Next is, uh, this is a foil lame. You can see it's metallicized. We could not find a, a saber lame. Uh, we don't have actually that many saber fencers here, mostly epee and foil. Uh, but this is, this is a foil lame. As you can see, enough to cover the chest, but not the arms. 
All right, so this is called a plastron, or more commonly known as an underarm protector. It goes under your jacket, on your sword arm, as to give a little bit more padding on where you're going to be hit the most. All right, so this is the women's chest protector as a requirement for obvious reasons. All right, um, next is the, we call the, the, the knickers, or I guess fencing pants. They're just regular pants, but they're really stretchy, so you can really, uh, you can move your legs around and lots of freedom of movement. All right, so it's your mask. Provides 750 newtons of protection to stop any shots to the head. This is mine. I have a sailfish painted on it. And then glove, which are the same for epee and foil. But in Sabre, you need a, an electrified cuff because you need that electrified wrist or forearm touch. And then lastly, we have the body cord. This runs from the inside of your guard here. Let me get my epee, hang on. This runs from the inside of your guard right here. You see that plug? Plugs in right there, runs through your sleeve, down the, out the back of your jacket, and then to the scoring machine, which I'll show right now. Okay, so a touch starts by the tip right here being depressed, which causes that to go off right there, the light and the buzz. So whenever this is depressed, it fires, follows a wire down the blade here, and then to the plug right here, which goes into his glove, down his sleeve, out the back of his jacket right here, and this goes to the reel cord. This follows all the way back to what is known as the reel. This reel has a cord. This goes all the way up and around to where it's hooked up at the scoring machine right here. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Fencing 101. Below I have included links to the previous and next video. Go check them out. Good luck and happy fencing.